Welcome to Beacon of Speech, I'm Fred Hunt, that's Ted Coley. Welcome to Beacon of Speech, Ted Coley. How are you doing? <laughs> See, I flipped a script, I didn't even do the start right. <laughs> I'm doing fine, thank you. You threw a knuckleball. I threw a knuckleball. What is Beacon of Speech? We sell freedom of speech to everybody. Everybody except for today, I think we are going to take away LeBron James's free speech because he's being a knucklehead. <laughs> Okay, he, and we're not taking it away for long. We're just going to put him in the freedom of speech uh, penalty box. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Uh, let's start from the, the very beginning. Last week, we were talking about two countries, Mozambique and Zimbabwe. Ted Coley, what can you tell me about uh, Mozambique and Zimbabwe? Well, I think I looked it up, and you were saying Rhodesia is now... Mozambique? Yep, and, and I that, think is it's Zimbabwe, right? that is incorrect. That is incorrect. I was wrong. Let's go. I'm grabbing the globe. Right over here. So when I was talking about Mozambique, right here, right here, and we'll we'll show our viewers. It's this on is, this the is high uh, tech. Our, 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 high our state of the art globe. Mozambique is on the Indian Ocean side of Africa. And I said the South African neighbor of Mozambique. Now Mozambique is actually a good country. I, when I said Rhodesia is now Mozambique, I meant to say Rhodesia is now Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is the one who drove the whites out and basically gutted their uh, country to, you know, cut off their nose to spite their face. <laughs> so I apologize to the citizens of Mozambique for slandering their country. The crappy country that you want to avoid is... Zimbabwe. Because we got a lot of complaints from <laughs> We got lots of countries. complaints from our viewers in Mozambique. So I'm putting your globe back for next week. So I had to clarify that right from the start. So I apologize. But the facts remain the same. I misspoke and I had tried to do it from memory. And that's what happens when I don't keep the script. You know, what I need to do is I need to go back to the Obama route. And we need a uh, teleprompter right here. I'm holding my hand behind the camera. And then I won't think at all. I'll just write the whole thing. I'll just be like, Mozambique is the good country. The bad country is... Yeah, you'll, you'll just be like Tom Brokaw. Or <laughs> yeah. I'll be the Tom... You know, we look a little bit like twins today. I know. The, the gray shirts. Uh, your beard is coming in gray. My beard is gray. So, you know, we could we could pass for uh, cousins. Yeah, this is like, uh, this is beacon of speech like in the retirement home. <laughs> oh, yeah, because we're both getting older. We're looking, we're, we're going to be all great doing beacon of speech. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we're, we're selling freedom of uh, errors this week. So, uh, Rod Rhodesia is Zimbabwe and Mozambique is crap. Are we good? And I also... Oh, I, no, did I make another error? I think you may have. Okay. Because I I think I said Darfur was a region in Sudan. Oh, no, Darfur. I, I, now, I got a flashback. I, I think Darfur, it is. Darfur, I think, is in Zaire. Are you sure? No. <laughs> well, no, because Sudan, here's the problem. Here's Sudan right here, and I'm looking at the globe, right? Sudan is right here. And you have an old globe. Within the last five years, Sudan had a civil war and broke off to Sudan. And now the south part is called South Sudan, hmm. right? And South Sudan is a um, landlocked sewer that makes Sudan look like, a, you know, a state-of-the-art palace, okay? You're not thinking of uh, Rwanda, are you? Uh, no, South Sudan is No, I mean, sewer. when you mentioned... Um... Oh, Darfur? Yeah. Or Dar no. What was that country you mentioned down there? Oh. Uh, Zaire? Zaire. I think Darfur is somewhere in here. Okay. Now, do you, you have your reading glasses? I'll pick on you because I don't have reading glasses yet and I'm going to be. Darfur should be somewhere around Lake Victoria, somewhere down in here. And that would mean it's not in Zaire. It's in Zambia or Angola. So is this state is this riveting stuff? Yeah, our fans are we're, we're talking about a globe. I and Ted, I don't mean to pick on you because I love globes. I could look at old globes all day. I, mm -hmm. I think that's fascinating. Okay, 
But this globe, what year was it made? Oh, God. Let's see. Eisenhower was probably president. Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, which means this globe is from the USSR days, which means it would have to be between before 1991. Yeah. Okay, there's no Estonia, there's no Latvia, there's no anything. It's basically Poland and then USSR. There's no Ukraine on this map, no nothing. So yeah, this... Uh, we're lucky it doesn't say Rhodesia on it. Mm. Aren't we glad we're talking about this uh, riveting globe stuff? When that globe was made, Greenland was still green. <laughs> no, Greenland's green now. Greenland, well, now, you, it, now it is. Yeah, right? now it is. Um, but, but up until recently, Greenland was ice. Greenland was ice because they said when they named them, they think they were confused. that Iceland was green and Greenland was ice. But now Greenland uh, ice caps melted, and now it really is green. So, but they said that Iceland is beautiful too. Do you want to go to Iceland? Iceland. I we know somebody who went there. There, who's that? Uh, Bob. Oh, really? Yeah. Did he like it? I think so. I want to write this down because I don't want to forget. So Bob went to Iceland. He liked it. I, as far as I know. How long ago was it? Oh, God, this was probably a while ago. It was probably 15 years ago. Yeah. That's great. You see what this says? Mm -hmm. I saw a movie. It was called War on Everyone. It was really good. Okay? You might even like it. Okay? Do you ever go to Redbox and rent anything? No. Okay. That's too well, much work. <laughs> pretend like you rent movies. War on Everyone is a story about two corrupt cops who try to shake down a bunch of criminals... For money, because they're crooked cops, right? Well, it was a good movie in the style of, you know, bad guys, you know, playing the system, right? Well, even though it was a good movie, a lot of people on the internet said, oh, well, in this political climate of crooked cops, war on everyone was, you know, not a good movie. I'm like, you know what? Was it a good movie or not? I don't want to hear about in this political climate. Who was, who was in that movie? Who were the cops? Oh, geez, I don't even know. Two guys I never heard of. But it was a good movie, okay? The point of the story is, is that they shake down all the criminals, and at some point, they're like, you know what? We don't like sh shaking down the criminals. We're just going to kill them all, okay? Which is a good cop movie, right? Well, part of the movie, which was a little hard to believe, is the cops went to Iceland, and they shot live in Iceland, okay? Well, no matter where you are a cop, whether it's New York City or Lincoln, Nebraska, or Cheyenne, Wyoming... No cop can afford to run off to Iceland for a couple days, even if you're shaking down the criminals. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But in the movie, it was beautiful. The, the the scenic Iceland shots were beautiful. It made me, it was almost like an advertisement, go to Iceland, because it was so nice. And like I said, the cinematography in a violent cop movie was actually really good. See, I can tell I'm boring you already. So you go rent this right now. Next time you're looking for something to watch, War on Everyone, I guarantee you, you'll like it. <laughs> Ted's putting it up. Go watch the movie War on Everyone. So what else do we want to talk about since we're, <laughs> since we're poking the bear today? I told Ted I was going to do this. Ted loves classic rock, right? Mm -hmm. And every day that he does Beacon of Speech with me, he loves classic rock less and less and less because I ruin it for him. I literally piss in his cornflakes every <laughs> single beacon of speech that we do. Now, the latest thing that I warned him that I was going to do this week, I gave him a warning so he could have his rebuttal, is um, the Eagles, the classic rock band from the 70s. <laughs> you see him shaking his head. The Eagles, the classic rock band from the 70s, are getting back together. And not only are they getting back together, but they are, and I wrote it down, they are replacing Glenn Fry with his son, Glenn Fry Jr., and, Vi and the country artist Vince Gill. Because I don't even know who Vince Gill is because I don't like country music. I know who Vince Gill is. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. So instead of the five of them, it's going to be the six of them. Who knows? Maybe they'll take more. Who's the guy that uh, cried that they took away all his money when they did the... <laughs> The Freeze is Over tour. Oh, Don Felder. Yeah, maybe they could hire Don Felder back and then cut all of his money. <laughs> and he could cry about it more in the next documentary. But um, 
So the Eagles... Wouldn't, wouldn't it be funny if they hired Don Felder's son, like, behind his back? <laughs> they hired Don Felder's son, and, and they said, we, we want you to bitch some more. <laughs> <laughs> your, your dad kind of stopped bitching. He was too old, so... Uh, no, you know what would be funny? If they hired Don Felder's son and then gave him, like, the same amount of money that Henley is making. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to give the finger to Don Felder. Yeah. Now, that would... That there, would he gets funny. your money, but you won't. <laughs> But that's the whole thing. That everything that drives Fred crazy about corporations is in play. Eagles are not about making new music. They're not about putting out new albums. Um, they only have one brand new album since they got back together in 19... What was it? When Nin was Hell Freezes Over? 94. 94? Yeah. So in, in 23 years, they put out one album of material. And basically, they're a living jukebox act. And mm -hmm. that's fine. There's a place for that. But at some point, what's enough money? You know what I mean? Because Glenn Fry is dead. Does Glenn Fry Jr. need the money? I mean, if it's, let's just say it's fun. Let's say it's fun being in the Eagles. It's nice building gold-plated bathtubs. Right? Well, what's enough? You're like, you know what? I already sang that song a thousand times. Well, you know what else is funny? is like, I assume the Eagles are the type of band that would preach about, you know, everybody needs more of a chance in right. life. It's like, if they need somebody, why why do they have to go to Glenn Fry's son? You know what I mean? Yeah. All the good musicians out there, they can't pick somebody else. Yeah. Well, I think that, I think that's, to me, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think them getting Glenn Fry Jr. is their excuse to be like, well, we're carrying on the Eagles for Glenn Fry to his son because the Eagles meant so much to him. But it goes back to, well, why are they splitting all his parts between him and Vince Gill? Well, because the Glenn Fry Jr. part is the PR part. They probably have him singing harmonies, and they probably have Vince Gill doing the lead singer stuff, and it's... It's a little less palatable if you don't bring in Glenn Fry Jr. If you just replace him with Vince Gill straight up, it looks like a money grab. Which it is. <laughs> Maybe. But the Eagles are famous for money grabs. I mean, that's what they're known for. You know what would be funny is if, like, Glenn Fry Jr., his mic is unplugged and his guitar <laughs> isn't hooked up and Vince Gill is basically, <laughs> you know, he's the one behind the... Yeah. Well, but they did that to the Sex Pistols. They said at the end, what was it, Sid Vicious, they unplugged his amp and they just let him flail away. Yeah. So, you know, for all I know, Glenn Fry Jr. is the mascot. You know, he's the he's the cartoon character to, to keep the band going. And again, I don't begrudge anybody for making a living. I really don't. Okay? But they are selling themselves as, you know, Ted brought up a good point before we talked about it because he knew I was going to poke the bear. You know, and the Eagles, they don't sing about how great it is to be a corporation. You know, their songs are not about, oh, hey, how can we work smarter, not harder? Hey, let's drain every nickel out of the bank. <laughs> you know what I mean? Their, their so songs are about good time living, you know, country style, right? Good time living, uh, uh, gonna loosen my load. I got seven women on my mind. You know what I mean? They're not um, how... How can we uh, afford the mortgage for our fourth vacation home in Malibu? Mm -hmm. And again, I, I guess that's the thing that bothers me about a lot of stuff now and like keeps me driven by Beacon of Speech is all these people portraying themselves as things that they just flat out aren't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you could turn it around on me and say, oh, well, Fred thinks he's a broadcaster. Well, they're, <laughs> you know what? They're not paying me. This is, again, my rec activity. I would like to turn it into a business. Nobody's ever going to pay me a billion dollars. So you could say, you could turn around and say, Fred bases his whole show, Beacon of Speech, on jealousy. And you would be partially right. But, you know, there's lots of people who sell something. Like, okay, I'm drinking a Coke. Okay. Drinking a Coca-Cola right now. And I'm not doing an ad for Coke because you probably shouldn't drink Coke, but I do. It's my my addiction. Now, are we allowed to do stuff like no, that? No, no. But who cares? Nobody's watching. <laughs> Coke is about selling carbonated soda and 
you know, giving you a jolt of caffeine, mm -hmm. right? Coca-Cola attempts in their commercials to sell an image, you, you know, everything is wonderful when you're drinking Coke, right? Well, that's kind of an exaggeration, okay? Well, no, I, not, not to interrupt, but like, you ever notice like when you're watching sitcoms and they're drinking a Coke, but it doesn't say Coke, it says like cola? Right. Is that because they didn't have permission? Right. And a lot of places, and the place I noticed it the most is there was a TV show called Thir Thirty Rock. Have you you watched Thirty Rock? I loved it. I thought it was a great um, show. Very, very brief. But what they would do, and we'll use the Coke as the example. What would happen is in the show they would really show Coke, right? And then you would, they would drink it. Mmm, that was refreshing, right? And then at the end in the credits it would say. Promotional considerations paid by the Coca-Cola bottling company. And that, that way you knew that they pay, paid for the product placement, right? Now, by showing the Coca-Cola can... Who, in, who paid for the product placement? Coke, well, Coke or whatever company it was. Now, in theory, because we don't have that disclaimer, we can't use that can because we're trying to sell Beacon of Speech. Well, guess what? We're free... We're not selling Beacon of Speech, so it's a gray area. You see what I'm saying? But say we charge subscribers, again, $1.99 a month to hear Fred and Ted rant, right? And then I drank the Coke. Coke could turn around and sue us saying that we were using the Coke can to promote our Beacon of Speech. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so as long as you're not making any money, you can pretty much do whatever right. you want. Right, but... And, again, let's... Well, then we should never have any problems. Yeah. But say we were wearing white hoods, right? And we were, like, saying, you know, we need to kill minorities, and I'm going to drink some Coke. Well, Coke <laughs> could be like, holy cow, we don't want to be associated with that. We are suing you because you are using our stuff without permission, even if you are making no money, right? And so, again, as long as we're having good faith, rational discussions about freedom of speech in America... They should be cool with it. And, now, and geography lessons. Right, and ge free geography lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I think that's the funniest thing in the world that we have. Because I love globes. If it was up to me, I would have a whole room full of <laughs> old globes. Because I think it's cool. And I think it's cool that you have a globe up there. Okay? But the point of my story about the Coke was, is even though they make everything wonderful when you're drinking the Coke, at the end of the day, they're still trying... To sell you a carbonated... See, I just burped. It's still trying to sell you a carbonated beverage. To me, the Eagles are trying to sell you something, but they're literally trying to sell you the opposite of what they are. You know what I mean? Coca-Cola is a corporation. The Eagles, I never thought of them as a corporation until they were like, you know what? We're the Eagles, Inc. You know, we, we sing songs to make money. Well, there's a difference between making singing songs... For a lifestyle and, you know, squeezing every nickel out of your product. You know, the songs <laughs> are the product. You see what I'm saying? And like I said, I, I feel bad because I was listening to a band this week. They're called The Fixtures, okay? And I don't know if they ever made any money and they don't exist anymore. And they uh, disintegrated into the ether. Well, they didn't make enough money to keep their band together. They weren't that popular. Maybe they should have been selling, you know, they should have thought of themselves more of a corporation. But again, punk bands don't think of themselves as little corporations. Every time I bring up punk bands, I can see Ted's eyes glaze <laughs> over. Oh, again with the punk bands. Talk about bands that I know of. Punk bands and soccer. So... Right now, the Eagles are getting back together. Ted, you are pushing 50. You are not 50, but you're getting close. What is the amount of money that you would pay to see the Eagles in 2017? Zero. No. I have free tickets for you to go see the Eagles. Would you go see the Eagles? Mm, uh, are you paying for parking? <laughs> if I pay for parking and I pay for your gas and I'm giving you the tickets because you are my good friend and I appreciate you doing Beacon of Speech with me. Are you going to see the Eagles I'm, in 2000? Yeah, I would probably go if it was paid for. <laughs> You're killing me, Ted. <laughs> Ted loves the... I'm sorry, I don't mean to pick on you, but I am. Because you used to love the Eagles. Yeah. 
And no, Paul, I'm having a very hard time with this. I, I think his what's his son's name? Is it is it Glenn or is it Deacon? Oh, I don't even know. I just wrote Glenn Fry Jr. But for all I know, it his name is Deacon, and I'm being a smart ass and just poking Ted. So no, I just that is really rubbing me the wrong way. The having his son replace him. Yeah. And again, I I honestly don't. If they just had the son only, right? I could maybe think it was a little more palatable, but throwing Vince Gill in there, <laughs> you know, it's almost like build, you know, the Golden State Warriors. You're just going to keep throwing good players <laughs> out there. You know what I mean? And then if we don't win, we're going to throw more good players over there. So, well, and people who love the Eagles could be like, oh, the Eagles and Vince Gill have had a relationship for 25 years, blah, 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 blah. So. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I, uh, it, really, it bothers me. <laughs> Just so you like know. I said, it. You know, and the thing is, is that I I think of like Led Zeppelin as mm -hmm. like the antithesis of that, but in a way, I mean, they've done just a handful of shows with Bonham's son, but right. for some reason, that doesn't bother me. To me, that doesn't bother me because John Bonham died tragically, right? And his son is a drummer. And they were not carrying on Led Zeppelin to milk every penny out. Yeah. They're like, you know, it's a special occasion. Yeah. It'd be nice if John Bonham's son came out. Um, it's a special occasion. It'd be nice if John Bonham's son came out for this. This is, we need to make money. <laughs> How do we put another cog in the Eagles machine to keep the machine going? You see what I'm saying? And again... I respect Robert Plant that he says, I am not a human jukebox. Yeah. We, we've talked about this at least a half a dozen times. I am not a human jukebox. I am not a human jukebox. I mean, the, the, the voice reverbs in my head from Robert Plant. Yeah, I mean, the more I hear about, the more I hear about Robert Plant, I, the more I like him. Yeah, and the thing is, if you are an artist, you want the Robert Plant trajectory. You make your money young, you blow it up, and then you keep doing, you have the money, what you need to do to live comfortably and do what you want to do. Because, you know, he's not, he's not milking the Led Zeppelin, you know, cow, however you want to put it. You know, he's like, I said what I needed to say, I'm getting residuals. Now, not everybody has that luxury. Yeah. And going yeah. back to the analogy of the fixtures, but the Eagles are not one of those bands. <laughs> Again, they... My understanding is they sold the rights to the guy making the documentary. Like, the guy making the documentary had to pay the Eagles to make their documentary. You see what I'm saying? So they were making money off the movie even before they released it. And again, that's good business, but you're not singing about, you know, um, we're going to make money on a new documentary and then, you know, turning it into song. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean those guys. They might as well just go to work for like Exxon Mobil or something. Right, right. How can we? How can we make money up? And again, how many bands have you heard say we love music but we hate the record industry? Ninety percent of them, right? Well, not the Eagles. We're gonna get the best lawyer we can, and we're gonna we're gonna angle it our way. Yeah, I just read an article on the Daily Mail just this week and it was about the rolling stones and it's had three of them who were over 70 who had girlfriends who were under 30 or 40 <laughs> and each one of them was leaving the party and each one of them was leaning on their girlfriend because they couldn't walk <laughs> they could not walk from the party to the car now because of the rolling stones you could say they were drunk or buzzed or hung over <laughs> or whatever but they were making it seem like they were 70-year-old invalids, like they're holding on to their nurses. You know, and when I think of corporate bands now, I think of the Rolling Stones. You know, Mick Jagger's like, yeah. well, it's a business. We got to, you know, make our money. We got to, you know, make it smart and all this other stuff. And at this point, I think of, you know, with this little stunt that the Eagles have pulled, I think of them as a bigger corporate band than the Rolling Stones because they never tried to replace any of their members with illegitimate children. How many kids does Mick Jagger have? Like 11 now? No, it's... it's Out of be... those 11, they all can't be girls. So they never tried to replace the drummer with Mick Jagger Jr., who loves drums. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And again, I can't stress enough. 
The John Bonham example is a perfect example because I've seen a few things where they've replaced George Harrison with Danny Harrison, but never for a tour, for a show yeah. or an event or we're raising money for the George Harrison Foundation. I think that's nice. What I think is horrible, again, we'll use the Van Halen example. Oh, we'll just kick um, yeah, Michael, Michael Anthony, Anthony out yeah. and we'll put in, uh, you know, Eddie Van Halen's son. Now, that's horrible. Yeah. Again, you're in the Eagles territory when you're like, we're just going to run Van Halen like a corporation. Well, you know, we'll all retire and then we'll put all our kids in and say it's Van Halen. We'll collect the residual checks. Yeah, I think it, what Van Halen did was even worse than what the Eagles oh, did. Oh, yeah, even worse. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But that's not what rock and roll, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Not, um, you know, corporate profits, uh, insurance plans, and, you know, the other things. So. Yeah. Isn't it nice that I ground this into the ground? If you look at Ted, you can see steam kind of out of his ears. <laughs> He's like, Fred, can't, can't we talk about something else? We are going to talk something else. We're going to talk about sports today. Now. I'm going to pick on you because I love picking on Ted. I'm making a speech lately. Ted's going to get sick of him, probably kill me. Was it Opie and Anthony? They were together and they were friends. And they said by the end that they hated each other and they never wanted to talk to each other. I have to watch out because the way I'm going, I don't want Ted to be like, uh, be like you know what, it's not worth making no money. Now, were they originally friends? Yes. Originally, they were they were acquaintances. They became friends, but over the years, they grew to hate each other. Now, do you know what the reason is for them hating each other? Um, is there anything specific, or is it? Just... I'm sure there is, but I don't listen to them closely enough to know what it was. But they pulled enough stunts where if you're not all on board, you know it makes sense that they would be pissed off at each other. But. For making no, at some point, let's say we make some money. Let's say we make uh, 50 grand a year. I'm making 50 grand a year. <laughs> I thought you were going to say grand. $50. Oh, no. Oh, to dead. <laughs> we'd be lucky to make $50 at this point. Say we're making 50 grand a year. You'd be like, you know what? I'm putting up for Fred's crap for 50 grand, <laughs> right? But after three or four years, you'd be like, hey, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to go work at the bus company, right? I'd rather do that than, than put up with Fred's crap. You know, everybody has their price. Right now, I have to tread lightly because you are making no money off of this. And you'd be like, you know what? This ain't worth it. He drives me crazy every week. I don't even get paid. <laughs> right? So we have to make money to make sure you stick around. You know, so I'm basically paying you to torture you. So that, Isn't that a good so business So for plan? the last, what, almost two years, this has been like an internship for Yeah, this is, this is your, inter your unpaid. I read something online, okay? And it said, back in the old days, not for you and me, but for our dads, right? Back in the old days, you would get a high school diploma, and then you'd work in a factory, and you'd make a good living. And now, in order to make a good living, you graduate high school, then you have to graduate college, and then you have to take a two-year unpaid internship. You don't get paid, sorry, you don't get paid <laughs> until you're 30. And they said a lot of people can't wait till they're 30 to get paid. Yeah. And that's the disadvantage of living in America. And then old timers are like, in my day, we just worked at the factory. Okay, well, what factory job is going to pay a 19-year-old a living wage? None of them. And that's why they're all like, well, McDonald's has to pay me $15. McDonald's is never going to pay you $15 an hour, ever. That was another article I wrote was about McDonald's paying people $15 an hour. But I don't want to talk about that. That's even drier than talking about the Eagles. We might as well be t get the globe back out and talk about Mongolia. So let's do something fun. So we're going to poke the bear. We're going to poke the bear. And you love sports. Specifically football. Right. Now, there is a list. ESPN came out with the 100 top athletes in the world. Okay. Now. When they came up with 100 top athletes in the world, they did not use people like Fred or people like Ted to say who are the top athletes in the world. What they did is they took how many Twitter followers each athlete had, how many championships they had, how much money they made, you see what I'm saying? And they fed all this statistics into a computer 
And then they came out with a list of the 100 top athletes in the world. So things like Twitter followers have to do whether you're the top athlete in the world. Ted, are you on Twitter? No. Now, but you are familiar with the concept of Twitter. Uh, I guess. What does Twitter have to do with being one of the top athletes in the world? Uh, nothing. Ted is correct. <laughs> okay. Now, you can be the top, and again, we're, we're going to spin into my next article that I did for Beacon of Speech, but it doesn't matter. Say you are in a sport. Okay, uh, say you play cricket in America. You, you're familiar to the sport cricket. Right? Yeah. If you're playing cricket in America and you're the top cricket player in America, how much money are you making a year? Probably not much. I, I would say no more than 20 grand a year. Okay? If you're playing cricket in America and you're the best American cricket player. Wow. If you are the best American cricket, if you are the best cricket player in India, okay, you're probably making $5 million a year. But again, so it doesn't matter. You could say, well, it's the uh, India is the cricket capital of the world, right? Well, that means that money doesn't necessarily correlate with being the best in your country. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, I use cricket just to be totally, you know, irrelevant. You know, the, I don't know how much the top cricket American cricket players make in America. I don't even know if American cricket players go to cricket or go to India and make <laughs> any money. Okay. <laughs> But with that in mind, with our premise, it's not just about sporting, it's about money, it's about Twitter followers. Who do you think, and we'll, we'll make it two tiers, what we're going to do is we're going to ask Ted if he knows who the top athletes in the world are, and then we're going to name some of the top athletes and see if Ted knows who they are. Okay, does that sound like fun or no? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Now, first question. Who do you think is the top athlete in the world based on the premise of all the rigmarole fed into an ESPN com uh, computer in Connecticut? Top athlete in the world. In the world. And it's in, all In my sports. opinion or who, who I do think you they think, picked? Who do you think that they picked? Oh, who do I think that they picked? And then you tell me who you think it would be and I'll tell you. Um, we'll make it two tiers. According to those criteria, yeah. According who to do those, I think they came up with? Who do you think they came up with? Uh, do, 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 wait a minute. Do, 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 do. This might take a little bit. <laughs> this might take a, more than a few minutes. We need a little time. We need to some post production. We'll put a timer in the corner, and uh, we'll spin it around. Um. I'll give you a hint. Because it's the world, there are no NFL players in the top. So it's not anybody in the NFL? No. As a matter of fact, I'm looking for the top NFL player. I'm still not finding it. I'm down to 19. Okay, 21. The number one NFL player is number 21. And you can you is know it, who is that it a, is. It, can I can I phone a friend? No, can I um <laughs> Is it a basketball player? No, it is not. Okay, um and I I don't even think baseball would even no, I'll I'll say it's um Serena Williams. You are incorrect. The number 1 athlete in the world according to the ESPN criteria. Is this going to be even anybody I know? No. No, that's why it's fun. That's why it's fun. Because I'm looking at the sheet. I'm like the teacher who doesn't know the answer, but I have, you know, the teacher's edition. So I think I'm smarter. Um, number one is Cristiano Ronaldo, the soccer player. I thought it was going to be Christian Amanpour or whatever and, the hell and his And it's is. funny because his team just won the Champions League in soccer yesterday. Now, I'm going to keep picking on Ted. Again, I'm going to keep picking what on What was this guy's name? Here. I assume Cristiano, it's a guy, right? Yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. He won the Champions League yesterday. What? Ted Coley, what is the Champions League? Uh, did you? Is it soccer? Yes. But, what? I mean, what kind of soccer competition is it? Um. <laughs> it is the best club teams in all of Europe. So, it's all the best teams from Spain, Britain, Italy, and Real Madrid... Beat Juventus from See, Italy. See, I should have known when you said it was the world that yeah. it would have been a soccer player because well, and, but the rest of the world, that's 
who they think are the best. Right. And and again, it goes back to in America, we're closed off. If I if I went to if you know I went what, to your funny, work, it's like it's like soccer is almost like the metric system. Yeah. Everybody does it except for America. If I went to Iron Mountain, how many people at Iron Mountain would know who Ronaldo is? Uh, nobody. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, not Iron Mountain. Ted's work. If I went to Ted's work, none of them would know who Ronaldo. Is. None of them. Okay. Now I'll give you I'll give you a hint for number two. Number two is an American, and he does play in a sports league, NBA or NHL or MLB. Um, uh, is it LeBron? It is LeBron. Wow, James. he's number he's number two. Number two in the whole world. It's because... funny because originally my knee jerk reaction was to say he was number one. Yeah, but uh, he's number two, and that's the other article I wrote today was uh, LeBron James. Me and you talked about this before the thing. He said it's hard to be black in America. Okay, which we are not going to dwell on. If you want to read that article, it is it is on Beacon of Speech today. Uh, number three, what I'm going to do is go through the top ten, and you can tell me if you know who they are. Number three is Lionel Messi. I think I've heard that name. He's a soccer player. He plays for Barcelona. He's another soccer player. He's awesome. Okay. Uh, number four, you would I could let you guess. I would give you 1,000 guesses, and you would never guess number four, even though you know his name. Okay. Number four is Roger Federer. Oh, what is that, a tennis player? That's the tennis player, and they said that he he is so popular when it comes to endorsements, <laughs> uh, making money on the side, and he's a great tennis player. But in America, who cares about <laughs> tennis? Nobody. Number five is Phil Mickelson. Uh, oh, no, wow. Yeah, I know. I was stunned by that because I would have thought Tiger Woods would be in the top five. But... Wow. Tiger Woods just got his DUI, <laughs> which I'm telling you, Tiger Woods is going to, you know, we don't want to talk about the subject we were talking about before, but Tiger Woods is going to get off because he blew a 0. 0.00 on DUI yeah. test. And he's got lawyers where he can pu- do a million dollars, pay them a million dollars. Well, get it's, off. Um, what was it, pain yeah. medication? The, um, multiple pain medications. But again, but, uh, but still, is. Is that still illegal? To yes. Be? It yes. doesn't matter like what the drug is. Right. If you're driving impaired, but it's illegal. Right? But if you have a million dollars in your back pocket, you can say, well, you gave him a DUI test and he was clearly not drunk. Yeah, but he was impaired. But he wasn't drunk. You know, if you get the right lawyer for the right amount of money, he can get that thrown yeah. out. And he's not going to go to jail for it because they'll be like, okay, we don't want to... All it is is a DUI case. We're not going to spend a shit lo- a crap load of money on it. Fine, plead down, and then they'll plead down to reckless op, and then get a um, um, what is it when you don't plead guilty? No contest. He'll plead no contest, and it'll be expunged. And then Tiger Woods will be like, "They never convicted me." You know, just Maybe, like the other celebrity we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was going to say, can we say his name? We better not, because he might actually sue us. <laughs> he might actually be listening. Yeah, he might, that guy might one day sue us. Um, number six is Neymar. Uh, do you know who Neymar is? Uh, is it Joe Neymar? <laughs> no, he's another soccer player. Number seven, I was surprised by Usain Bolt. Oh, you know wow. who that yeah, is? Yeah, the Jamaican no. track star. Usain Bolt might be the richest person in Jamaica. By the time his career is over. And I, when I say richest person in Jamaica, I even mean like compared to the richest people in Jamaica. Because Usain Bolt is really, I didn't, I've read some of the stuff that, some of the money he's making. That guy is making crazy track. I didn't know there was that much money to be made in track and field. Uh, number eight is Kevin Durant. Wow. Number nine is Rafael Nadal. You know who that is, the tennis player. I think I've heard that name. Number 10 is Tiger Woods, even though he has not won a tournament in four years. Again, because you're looking at the criteria of uh, career earnings, career this. Uh... Now, will, in your opinion, Tiger Woods ever win? Oh, no, tournament? no. He's done. His back is shot. His back is shot, and... Do you know what caused his back problems? I mean, is this... He said... Okay. Are, are we ready to do some slander here? 
I remember reading when they were testing NFL players, they started testing them for performance or enhancing drugs. And they started to test um, baseball players for performance enhancing drugs. And they said that Tiger Woods had bulked up to be the strongest golfer. Okay. Well, he used to tell his wife, I don't have any time to spend with you because I am at the range hitting 10,000 balls a day, which we found out later was a flat lie. <laughs> he was banging 10,000 Denny's waitresses and saying he was hitting 10,000 balls. Well, if he wasn't hitting 10,000 balls, do you think that he was doing 10,000 sit-ups to bulk up his body to where it is now? No. No. Again, which leads us back to they never test him for performance-enhancing drugs till later in his career. If I say Tiger Woods is on performance-enhancing drugs or was, next thing you know, we are getting sued on Beacon of Speech for slander. So I am saying that it was a possibility, just like there's a possibility that aliens could land and, you know, poof him away with a magic wand. <laughs> I am not saying he definitely was... I'm saying that there was a possibility in the realm that all things are possible. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Number 11, Stefan Curry. Number 11, Novak Djokovic. Um, number 13, Virat uh, Kohli. What? Right here. Wait a minute. <laughs> V I R A T K O H L I. What is he Russian? I don't. I don't even know who it is, and I'm looking at it. I think again back to the cricket players. I think they might be cricket players. Rory McIlroy is a golfer. Ronda Rousey is oh, an yeah. MMA. But it's amazing that you could have a woman MMA in the top twenty in the, one of the top athletes of the whole world. Now is Serena Williams in there? We're going to go we're right there. Right down. Right down wow, to number 19. She is 19. Right below Kaka and Jordan Speed. <laughs> Kaka. Yeah, I know. Another, so uh, another soccer player. But as we go down here, you come into people you have never heard of. Like Antoine Griezmann, Andre Zanesta. <laughs> now, I know who Anderson Silva is, but he's an MMA. Uh, Carmelo Anthony, what has he done? He hasn't done crap, and, you know, he's on the list. So, again, you're getting people who you have never heard of, right? Do you know who Christian Bale is? You know who Maria Sharapova is. It's a female, you know, tennis player. You said, but, you said Christian Bale. Oh, is Gareth that, Bale. Is that the Gareth actor? Bale, yeah. Christian Bale is the actor. Gareth Bale is the soccer player. The point is, is now you're getting to, and let, let me, let me, and I'm going to be racist, or not the racist, sexist here for a minute. Okay, and I don't mean to keep kicking the table. I usually don't do that, so I'm sorry. Now, we're going to pick on... Let me circle this real quick. <laughs> where, where did it go? Maria Sharapova is the 23rd best athlete in the world due to all the criteria. Now, say you take Maria Sharapova and you put her on the NFL field. What happens to Maria Sharapova? She gets killed. She gets killed. So again, the ESPN criteria are based on statistics that they fed into the computer. Now, if you took LeBron James, you took him out of the NBA, and you put him on the NFL field, he could probably play tight end, wide receiver. I would say that's fair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other people, like Ronaldo, if you looked at his legs, if you took him out, and instead of being a soccer player, and you, from an early age you raised him, he could probably be a great track and field star. Or he could be a great baseball. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Some of it, when it says greatest athletes, they translate. How does Maria Tran Sharapova translate to better than anybody in the NFL? Mm -hmm. Well, they'd be like, well, NFL is not world sport. Okay, throw out the NFL. Put her on all the soccer team, all the top le Champions League soccer teams in Europe. Is she better than any of those guys? No. No. She might not get killed. She might get paralyzed <laughs> okay so maria sharapova kind of skewers the list ronda rousey i'm not gonna badmouth her because she would come to the beacon of speech studio because <laughs> i don't know what she's doing right now she's not fighting she could come beat us up and say i proved that i'm one of the baddest people in the world is and she, I what, is she from here 
I don't think she, well, not from, she's from America, but she's not from Cleveland. Oh, okay. Well, so, isn't there one that's from, like, Cleveland? Yeah, but I don't remember what the name was, so that that's my fault, because I'm not a big MMA, MMA guy. Um, we don't know who those people are, more soccer players that you don't want to talk about. Uh, Kareem <laughs> Benzema, do you know who Kareem Benzema is? No. No. Now, if we were doing this list, we're doing a beacon of speech, and you are my uh, older Czechoslovakian brother, we could be like, oh, Cam Newton, I do not know who Cam Newton is. This list is invalid. Right? Well, again... I saw Tom Brady was on there. Tom Brady was 21. He was the number one <clears throat> NFL guy. The guy in Czechoslovakia could say the list is invalid because he doesn't know who Cam Newton is. Okay. Well, I've seen Cam Newton in commercials. Cam Newton looks like he could play any other sport. And Cam Newton looks like he could be an MMA. And if you trained him, so that's why this is. Oh what, yeah, he's like what? What is he? Superman? Is yeah, he look. He nickname, looks like Superman. Nickname. He's a black Superman. Okay. He, you could put him on any any sport, and if you trained him from youth to an adult, I think I in a way he's kind of similar to LeBron. Right, right. I agree. He his the top athletes should transcend sports. Okay, and say you again. You took uh, who were we talking about? Cam Newton. If he was raised in, say he was raised in uh, Brazil, he's raised in Brazil and he loves soccer, you know, he potentially could be one of the top 100 athletes in the world as a soccer Now, player. how do you feel about when Tiger Woods was healthy? Oh, no, that's not, no, 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 no. Not only should, now, Maria Sharapova shouldn't be on here based on not that tennis isn't a sport, Okay, because tennis is a sport, all right? But based on she's not better than anybody on X team that you name. You know, she's no better than anybody on the Detroit Red Wings. She's no better than anybody on the Toronto Maple Leafs, you know, the, the Toronto Blue Jays, whoever you want to name. Now, there's there's a Cleveland talk show host. Right. Who, didn't he used to argue that Tiger Woods was the best yes. athlete? Yes, oh. yeah, that guy is an idiot. <laughs> I'll say his name because I, I welcome seeing him in court. That was Tiger uh, Mike Trevisano, right? <laughs> He's an idiot. He's a moron. I will throw his name out there. To say Tiger Woods, saying Tiger Woods is the best athlete in the world is it's asinine because basically what Tiger Woods is is the the best player at he's the best rec activity player in the world. Okay, he's not the best athlete. Okay, if you take um. And, and my analogy is bocce ball. Do you know how to play bocce ball? No. I've... Okay. But you're familiar with bocce ball, right? You just roll the ball in their backyard and you <laughs> bump the balls around, yeah. right? You can be the best bocce ball player in the whole world because it's rec. And you could replace bocce ball with cornhole. You could replace <laughs> it with charts, okay? Things you do in your backyard for fun, Okay. Golf is basically sounds, a bigger version of backyard. Sounds rugby. like a question on Family Feud. Yeah, that, that's exactly <laughs> right. So Tiger Woods is not an athlete. You know who's not an athlete? I'm going to write it down. Okay, who's not an athlete in America? Okay, because Americans are stupid this way. Soccer players are athletes. Tennis players are athletes. Okay, these people are people who do rec activities for a living. Right there. And hopefully it doesn't come out. <laughs> Golfers and NASCAR. Neither one of them are activities. Okay? Now, I drive for a living. You drive for a living. Okay? All NASCAR is is an amped up version of what we do for a living. <laughs> they are not athletes. Do you cons Ted Coley, do you consider yourself an athlete as you drive around the city no. streets of Cleveland? No, I don't. But Ted, you, you, you drive with your arms for eight hours a day. That's your exercise. You don't consider yourself an athlete? No. No. And that's why NASCAR guys aren't either. They they all can suck. The NASCAR guys can suck an eight. Uh, now. Were, were there any NASCAR guys on there? Uh, I don't think so. I, I'm looking down the whole list. Like, number 67, Ryan Lockie. Okay, he's a swimmer. He's an athlete. Okay? To me, track and swimming are two of the um, oldest, you know, 
uh, sports competitions there are. So I agree with that. And Ryan Lockey, I think if he, again, when he was young, if he started on something else. Manny Pacquiao is at now number 59. Boxing's a sport. That's a real sport. Um, here's more people I never heard of. Blah, blah, blah. Number 75, Hope <laughs> Solo. Hope Solo is the closest thing. Now, I'm going to stick up for Hope. I don't like Hope Solo. I think she is a uh, sociopath. Okay, but of all the women... Of all the women in women's sports, I take that back. Two people. When I see Serena Williams, I see someone who could maybe translate their athletic skill. Okay? Not Maria Sharapova. Or Hope Solo because she is a sociopath. When I see oh, Hope Solo... What's her sport? Soccer. But no American woman is one of the greatest athletes in the whole world. You see what I'm saying? So again, it makes the list invalid because you're elevating. Because what you're doing is you're introducing things like into the ESPN computer, like Twitter followers. Oh, well, a million people follow her on Twitter, so she must be. Well, no, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. And then we keep going. Jo oh, here we go. Look, tab right here. What does number 86 say? Number 86. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, NASCAR, is not an athlete. So they got people who are not athletes on here. Golfers, NASCAR people. Again, you could take... But well, we're going to use hockey because I don't see any hockey players on here unless I missed it. Okay? Everybody on... What's a good hockey team right now? The Pittsburgh Penguins. Everybody on the Pittsburgh Penguins is better than at least 50 of the 100 athletes on here. But it, it's not about athletics. It's all about image. It's all about presenting yourself to the public. It's all about Jimmy Johnson, Inc. Well, of course we're sportsmen. You know, we're, we're NASCAR drivers. And they're not. Okay, um, I cut it off at number 91, so it could be worse because uh, apparently I didn't take the last one. But Ed, Eddie Hazard, again, you're coming up with more. Uh... Now, look, look through some of the lists. It's just 70 through 91. Put on your reading glasses and tell me, you could read some of these people and tell me if you know who they are. You could read it out loud <clears throat> instead of me asking you. Just say yes or no. Do you know who those people are? Javier Hernandez? No. <laughs> what is this, Ma Long? Ma Long. No. Chinese athlete. Tony, is it Cruz? I don't know who that is. Tony Cruz, no idea. Justin Rose. Justin Golfer. Rose. I think I know who that is. Yeah. Again, golfers are not athletes. Oh, no. But you know what? I don't know who that is. <laughs> J.J. Watt. I do know who Football that is. Football player. And I, I agree with that. Oh, I absolutely agree. J.J. Watt's one of the best athletes oh, in the world. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, yes. he's he's a defensive player that is almost like, like an offensive yeah. defensive player. He is like a throwback to the old NFL. And yeah, when they made the list... When they made the list, they should have had people like J.J. Watt, the best in their sports. Yeah, he's like he's a defensive player that can like change the whole game. Yeah. Okay, so you agree with one person on this list. So do I. Yeah, I, yeah he's, <laughs> he's great. Hope Solo, which you talked about. Yeah. We, what was this, Thiago Silva? Yeah. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Raheem Sterling? No. Eden Hazard, no. Eddie. Did I? Does it say Eden? Oh, I thought it was Eddie Hazard. Okay, go ahead. Theo <laughs> I Walcott? Be... I have no idea. Uh, what is this? Didier Drogba? Drogba, soccer player. <laughs> More Mario. Is it Gatsi? Gatsi, soccer player. <laughs> Robert Lewandowski. I have no Wasn't idea. There, How do you... Isn't he part of uh, Trump's entourage? <laughs> Marco, what is it? Reese? No idea. Lewis Hamilton. I don't know who that is. Jason Day? I don't know who that Golfer, is. Golfer, not an athlete. Jimmy Johnson, I know. Jimmy who Johnson is. is an NASCAR. Not an athlete. Caroline 
<laughs> no idea. Was, was not. <laughs> no idea. Lynn Dan. No idea. Saul Alvarez. No idea. Uh, something Singh. <laughs> no is idea. That, is that is that VJ Singh? No, not VJ. Thomas Mueller. Soccer player. Wow. So instead of keep going through the list. So these are supposedly the best athletes in the world. Now, because we're in America, we're going to give the soccer players a pass. You don't know the soccer players, right? And that's fine because you don't follow soccer. You don't follow international soccer. But it says two things. That America is on an island, right? And this list is based on things that doesn't have anything to do with athletics. Now, they're going off of, you know, who's the most... Uh, the, the best soccer player in Spanish soccer. Who's the best soccer player in Italian soccer? And, and that's fine if you're going to do your list. But you can't throw non-sports in there. And very few, like I said, how many women would I put on that list? I, I think I'd have two. Like you said, Serena Williams, because, oof. And Hope Solo, just, again, she's a sociopath. I would say Ronda Rousey. Because MMA, that's still hardcore. I'm going to punch you in the face. And I honestly think that Ronda Rousey could kill men. Not oh, yeah. she she could not kill other MMA fighters, okay? But if she came in that door, I think she could kill you, and I think she could kill me. Okay? Yeah. Which is the basic premise of uh do I think Ronda Rousey is more of an athlete or Jimmy Johnson? Well, if you trained me for a year, I think I could be in NASCAR. I might not win, okay? But again, I drive, you drive. Right? All we do is amp it up to 200 miles an hour. It's like a wreck activity. You know, you're playing bocce ball in the back. All you're doing is ex extending bocce ball out to, you know, uh, golf. That's all you're doing. And the same thing. Now, and, and that's why I said the, the list is preposterous. But, again, is it a real story? Or did they make something to try and get a million people to click on it, read it, and then argue about it? You see what I'm saying? Now, ESPN is saying, well, this is the right answer because this is what our computer said. Well, your computers are invalid. You, you can look at a person and you, it would probably be more valid if you took your top soccer writers, your top football writers, your top baseball writers, and then put it into a pot and mix it up instead of putting irrelevant things in there and say we're going to have um people from obscure sports like women's golf on here and again i'm fred one of my favorite sports is indoor soccer okay there's nobody on indoor soccer <laughs> if i'm running a computer and it's my computer program i'm going to be like well screw it i'm putting the indoor soccer players on there and it cough up at number 73 um, the, the best soccer player, I got a guy's image in my head and I can't remember his name, but an indoor soccer player in America is one of the top 100 athletes in the world. And you'd be like, well, that's preposterous. And again, that's what happens when you program computers to do stuff and you don't think of it logically. Ted, my throat is just shredded. I'm glad you gave me the coat. Ted Coley, I want to make sure I thank you for the Coca-Cola. For the cola. Yes, for, for the generic cola. Well, we'll, we'll cover it up. We'll, we'll be like, Ted, thank you for the generic <laughs> cola. Well, it's too late. We already showed it. So, but yeah, so we'll go back to the top 10, okay, since we're done bitching about the bottom, right? Number two is LeBron James. LeBron James this week said, it's hard to be black in America. And your friendly neighborhood beacon of speech announcer said that LeBron James is as black as O.J. Simpson. <laughs> okay? You Would you agree with that statement or disagree? You said that? That's what I said. He's as black as O.J. Simpson. Yes. Meaning he is not part of the struggle. <laughs> oh, yeah. LeBron James is not about social justice. Now, does he say racism is bad, uh, donate bikes to kids? Yes. LeBron James is not a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Okay? What I'm saying is that he is not part of the struggle. 
the racism that people face in America is not the same racism that LeBron James has faced in mm -hmm. his life. I read something that I kind of agree with, not really, but I could see the argument, okay? There was something that said Babe Ruth is still the greatest base baseball player in history, okay? But somebody else wrote that he wasn't because he did not face Negro Leaguers. That he was only facing the best white players of mm -hmm. his day, okay? Now, I don't agree with it, but there's something to be said for that argument, okay? There is no white league or black league anymore. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Back when Babe Ruth played, there, there weren't two separate leagues. If you are the best basketball players in America, white, black, Asian, you know, I'm thinking Jeremy Lin, Hispanic, who, whoever, whoever you think of, right? The NBA doesn't care. They want the best players in the world, okay? So for LeBron James to say he has faced racism, not when it comes to basketball. Now, maybe in his everyday life, has he... You know, people didn't know who he was. I remember about 10 years ago, Oprah Winfrey came out and she said, I faced, when she still had her show, I faced racism today. I was at a store. They didn't know who I was. They wouldn't keep the store open late for me. Okay? And then when you researched the story, you found out that it was a store in Europe. Okay? Well, it, it, what does being in a... She wanted to keep the store open. They didn't know she was Oprah Winfrey. And it wasn't that they wouldn't serve her. They wouldn't keep the store open. They didn't realize that she was worth a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. They just thought she was a lady who wanted to keep the store mm -hmm. open. So when you researched it, Oprah Winfrey says, I faced racism. And then when you found the story, you're like, no, she didn't really face racism. Now, when she was young, maybe she did face racism, okay? Mm -hmm. Before she had a million slash billion dollars sitting in her back pocket, Okay. For an athlete in America to say that they're facing racism when the stack is slanted towards we want the best athlete, it's disingenuous. For the average black person, I think they do face, face racism in America. My problem is, again, back to the messenger, LeBron James thinks he is facing racism. I don't think, I don't think so. Okay, And the analogy that I used is, and this is the article I wrote for today, everybody can say that they are facing a type of prejudice yeah. in their life. They don't like me because, oh, me and you, let's say me and you, okay? I lost my job last year, and I could go on Beacon of Speech and say, I lost my job because I'm old. Ageism. See all that gray hair? They mm. saw my gray hair, and they wanted to get rid of me. Or say I was gay, right? And they say, oh, we... You know what? They got rid of me because I was gay and they knew I had a boyfriend. Well, at the end of the day, they just got rid of me because there wasn't enough work and eeny, meeny, miny, mo, this guy's got to go. <laughs> Out you go. Right? And, you know, I could say more about this, that, or the other. Right? But at the end of the day, it's their prerogative. <clears throat> you know, they are the multinational corporation who, at the end of the day, all they care about is money. Right? And at the end of the day, all the NBA cares about is the best at, um, players that they can get, and they start scouting out players in fifth grade. How many times have you heard about AAU camps and basketball camps in eighth grade, and they already have colleges scoping out these AAU camps? So again, I'm not saying... It, it, it's again calling a horse a horse, right? Right? There is racism, but not where LeBron James sees it. You see what I'm saying? And well, it's like it's like Hillary was saying, oh, you know, the reason she wasn't elected president was because of misogyny. Right. And that's a perfect example. That could have went in the article it's, too. It's it's like, okay, so there's no chance that people voted against you because they just don't like you. Right. They don't like you. They don't like your criminal. They don't like the Clinton Foundation. You're exactly right. And when there is real racism, when you cry wolf and say, oh, there's racism, it hurt like the Oprah Winfrey example. Mm -hmm. Well, when, when the article came out that discredited her for that example, 
Well, Oprah Winfrey, when she was a kid and she was doing crack cocaine at 15 or whatever it was and having her abortions or whatever, she was facing real racism, okay? But instead of using the real example, she's like, they didn't sell, sell me a handbag in Germany or France or whatever country it was. Well, that's not real. So what you're doing is by not, by exaggerating your mm -hmm. rich plight, but again, and another um, example I used in the in the article, and again, I'm going to pick your brain. When you think of the whitest white person in America, okay, who do you think of when I say who is the whitest white person that you can think of? The whitest white person in America? Whitest white person. Uh, the stereo to, and don't, you know, because I got all this white beard. When you think of the whitest white person, who is white person personified? Do you, I know it's a curveball, but... Um, uh, wait a minute. Whitest white person in America? Yeah. Well, honestly, I think it's somebody like Mitt Romney. Okay. That is a good example. Someone like Mitt Romney coming out and saying, I had the struggle. You know, I was running for, you know, president, and then all these people said horrible things about me. <laughs> Just because I'm rich, people were holding it against me. And... Again, here's the excuse. Well, they don't like me because I'm rich. Well, I... He could be like, well, I'm the stereotypical white person. And I had trouble with the minor getting the minority vote out. Well, that's true, but maybe it's because you're wooden and laconic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And people didn't like the way that you had formulated, moved yourself to the middle to be white bread in the middle of everything. You see what I'm saying? Now, in the article, and the reason I asked you is when I think of the whitest white person, I put down, Fred, who do you think is the whitest white person? I put Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> and he's the guy who did Facebook, okay? And when I think of him, I think of a pencil neck geek, went to Harvard, um, all he does is programming, plays video games, you know, all pasty, and if you put Mark Zuckerberg and Ronda Rousey in a ring together, I would think that Ronda Rousey could kill Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> okay, he would be dead. Now, he would be... <laughs> it's now, funny that you spend your time thinking about stuff like that. Well, uh, but, and that's <laughs> the whole thing. And Mark Zuckerberg, if he was here, he would be like... He would be like, oh, oh no, no. I'm, no, I'm not making fun of you because I, I think of stuff like well, that, Well, and too. that's the whole thing. But Mark Zuckerberg, if he was here, being the, the pencil neck geek that he is... He'd be like, oh, no, no, I was in athletics when I was in college. I was on the athletic team. I was on, the, Coley, I, I was can, on the chess team. I, I'm being dead serious here. Can you name the, the, the sports team that Mark Zuckerberg was in in college? And you're close when you say he was on the chess team. It's not, no joke. I was on the blank team in college that makes, he says he was an athlete. Uh, uh... Now think... Again, think of the whitest person you know. Um, was it lacrosse? No. I was on the fencing team fencing. in college. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So he's saying he was on the fencing team. He's as athletic as the next guy. Okay. Now, the reason I bring up Mark Zuckerberg, again, if you say who's the stereotypical whitest white guy, I think of Mark Zuckerberg. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, he lives... A charmed life compared to LeBron James, right? He walks the streets freely and nobody ever harasses him, right? No, that's not true at all. Mark Zuckerberg pays $5 million a year for personal security, okay? You know how many bodyguards he has? Ten. Sixteen full-time bodyguards. Wow. He bought himself a portion of the Hawaiian island so he wouldn't even have neighbors because he gets death threats on almost... A near constant basis. Now, why? Well, because people hate him because he made a billion dollars and he's rich. Now, do they hate him because he's black? Well, of course they don't because he's not black. <laughs> do they hate him because he's because they're jealous of him because he's he basically won in life? He's the biggest winner, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Mark Zuckerberg say now this is not what he said. But we're going to use the rich. People hate me because I'm rich. Okay? Well, that's probably partly it, but people hate you because 
Some people are just <laughs> flat out jealous. And it's the same thing with LeBron James. I don't think they hate you because you're black. I think they hate you because they are jealous. Yeah. And it's the same thing. You could interchange Mark Zuckerberg's name and LeBron James' name. They hate me because yeah. they are jealous. So when you throw racism in there, you are taking away from real racism in America. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what bothers me about certain people in their positions. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, he doesn't do a lot of interviews because he's closed off. But again, he's the CEO of a corporation. And again... Facebook did not become a billion-dollar corporation by playing nice and shaking hands and kissing babies. It, he became a billion-dollar corporation by buying that company, screwing that guy, screwing that guy, screwing that guy. And you watched, uh, they, they even had a movie of, about it, about all the people he screwed coming out of Harvard to make Facebook great. Well, he was making enemies all along the way. Well, it's like, well... Oh, did you see that movie? Oh, no, I only read the synopsis because I'm like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to turn into one of those people who hate them. You know what I mean? But it goes, So do you think that movie was was true then? That oh, I'm, he, from what I read, most of it was true. That he basically was screwing out... I am So he was, to, he was a bastard? Yeah, but not a bastard like I'm kicking babies. He was a bastard within the realm of the business world. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so, in America, you are celebrated as being a corporate bastard because you win, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing as LeBron James. When you win in basketball, you still beat 30 other teams. You're going to have... You're going to have people jealous from the Utah Jazz who are going to hate you because you're better. Mm -hmm. People from the Phoenix Suns. We hate you because you're better. Not because you're black, but because you are better. Mm -hmm. And basically, again... When there's real racism, you need to say racism. And when it's just people being jealous, you need to say those are people are just being jealous. And that's what my article was about today. It was all about do you human know, like, nature. Do you, do you know roughly how much Mark Zuckerberg is worth? It's in the Ooh. billions, right? Oh, billions. I, I thought you meant whether it's $1 billion or $14 billion. It's billions. Okay, with so beat. say like $10 billion would be right. roughly... Probably close to what he's worth. Right. Well, I heard he was given a, what, a commencement speech mm -hmm. somewhere. I don't know if it was Harvard. or Isn't that where he went? Harvard, yeah. And he was saying, you know, there's something wrong in this country when I can, you know, make $10 billion. And then somebody, like, you know, college graduates come out and they can't find a job. Right. Something along those lines. And I'm thinking to myself, well... If you have $10 billion, you're certainly somebody who can do something about that. Right. You don't need to change policy or whatever. You can change a lot of lives. I mean, if you think there's a certain amount of money that you don't deserve, right. why don't you give it away? Why would I give it away? I want more money. <laughs> Which goes back and to... And I'm not even saying that he necessarily has to give it away. He could set up businesses and hire these people, which he probably does already, but... Right. But again, Facebook, again, I use Facebook, you don't. Ted does not believe in social media. I respect you for that. Okay. I don't I don't do Twitter. I don't do anything but Facebook. Okay. And part of it is just because I need a platform that I'm comfortable with. I'm comfortable with Facebook. Okay. But when Mark Zuckerberg set up Facebook, he did not set it up for the whole world. He set it up so you could look at pretty professional girls and try to be friends with them. He admitted it himself. Okay. So when I, again, we're using the top basketball player and the top social media guy as examples, okay? <laughs> we're not taking the lower people on the thing because the whole point of my story is is that the people who win and then turn around and complain, it rings hollow. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm going to be in the business world, I'm going to beat everybody, and then I'm going to complain when I beat them all. Mm -hmm. It's the same... Yeah, it's not fair that I was able to beat all these people. Yeah. yeah. My, my There's something life... wrong with the system if, you know, right. if I'm worth $10 billion. And people who do that, but in Mark Zuckerberg's head, you know, he may say that, but in real life, you know, just take the B out and say it's 10000 right? 
Well, I have $10,000, but uh, who's the guy who owns all the corporations they make fun of? Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, you know, he has $20,000. You know, you take away the billion and change it to 1000 and it's it's like the Joneses and the Smiths next door. He's got twice as much as why you have ten billion? What what's Warren Buffett doing? He has twice as much as well. Me. Yeah, well, isn't he another guy, Warren Buffett, who complains that yeah. oh the taxes aren't high enough okay, on people yeah. like me? Yeah, taxes aren't high enough. You know, on I heard like somebody me. say, and I think that this is probably true, that these guys do stuff like that on purpose to keep the the lower class off their backs. Well, yeah, so people don't want. So people don't, that's why you can tell what people say as PR and what people do. Like you said, if you got $10 billion in the bank, you can change the world. And Bill Gates, again, Bill Gates is like, I got $10 billion in the world. I'm going to change the world. And I'm going to spend $100 million and give all the kids in Africa whooping cough vaccines or mm -hmm. whatever vaccines he uses. And then he doesn't publicize it because he's not doing PR. He really feels he can make a difference. Now... Vaccinating a hundred million people in Africa, or you you could say there's nothing better you can do with that money, right? Well, Mark Zuckerberg would be like, "Well, you're just throwing money in the toilet," because again, they live in a different class. Instead of the Smiths and the Jones in Cleveland, Ohio, you know, you're the Smiths, we're the Jones. You know, they're in the billionaire district, and they're like, "Oh, well, what's Bill doing?" And all you're doing is replacing the bill the billions with the thousands. You know, and me and you could be arguing about the same thing. But, like you said, I honestly think that people like LeBron and Mark Zuckerberg, like you said, you nailed it, which is why I love doing Beacon of Speech with you. Part of what they say is to make them look as more sympathetic yeah. figures. Yeah. Yeah, it makes them look like the common man. Yeah, well, we're all common... Uh, just like in one of our favorite punching bags at Beacon of Speech is Howard Stern. And the reason being is because I really liked Howard Stern. You used to love Howard Stern. But then when he did America's Got Talent, you could see what a SOB he was. That yeah, he's, I, if he's, you give he's, me he's the, the money. The Eagles. Yeah. If you give me the money, I'm just like all the celebrities that I made fun of for the last 20 years. Right? Just pile the money truck up and we are good. Right? And he is the Eagles. And like I said, you you can do certain things, but then don't turn, don't take that big paycheck. And I don't want to get into it so late on the clock, okay? <laughs> Kathy Griffin last week, she was holding Donald Trump's severed head in her hand, okay? Now, I listened to a band called Guar, okay? Are you familiar with Guar? No. Guar, they are aliens from Antarctica. And they dress up in foam suits so they look like aliens. And they sacrifice fake people on stage. Not real people, fake people. And they spray the audience with blood and semen. Okay? Now, it sounds bad, but it's all cartoon. It's all like the Guar cartoon. They play light thrash metal or rock and roll. Whatever you want to say Guar plays, right? When Obama was president, they used to parade around the stage with an Obama severed head on the stage and said, we killed Obama. Okay? Then, when he was elected out of office, they said, well, we got to take the Obama head and put it away. We're going to replace it with the Donald Trump head. Okay? This, this band? This band, Guar. And they're, they're fairly popular for what they are. They're a little niche band. Okay? All they did is we decapitate the president, ha, 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 right? It doesn't matter who the president is. We decapitate the white president, we decapitate the black president, okay? It's all about the office of the presidency and their, you know, music, right? So Guard decapitated Donald Trump. As soon as Kathy Griffin came out with that, I, with that picture, I read an article on, I think it was metalinjectionmagazine.com, and they said, Guar is mad that Kathy Griffin stole their bit. <laughs> okay? The problem... Now, would, did you see the Kathy Griffin? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it all over the place. Kathy Griffin has the right to do that. Okay? She, as purveyors of free speech at Beacon of Speech, I believe that she has the right to do that. She's in the gray area of cartoon violence, 
Okay? She's a comedian talking about the president. Okay? And lots of comedians say edgy things. And that is within her rights. Where she crossed the line is, Kathy Griffin is not poor. Okay? Guar is arguing... If you took Guar, okay, and you said, Guar, you have to disband, they would probably all have to get jobs. <laughs> they do not have money sitting around in their account where they could retire from being Guar. Okay? Do you know Kathy Griffin was getting paid by CNN when she did that? She was getting a corporate paycheck from CNN. Well, yeah, because does, doesn't she do um, the New she Year's Eve show? She does the New Year's Eve our... show with her best friend, Anderson Cooper. Okay? Which goes to show... Now, is that the only thing she did with CNN? Or... She did special, you know, things. She wasn't on there. She wasn't reading the evening news. But she was getting... A paycheck from the corporate entity. So again, it goes back to the LeBron James, um, Mark Zuckerberg thing. If you want to show a picture of Donald Trump's severed head on the internet, and you don't want to make any money, that's fine. Okay? People do it. People now, have been doing it. Now, CNN fired her from Yes. This. And here's another thing. Do you think CNN fired her because... They were appalled by that no, no, because no. they were getting pressure. No, because I guarantee you, Anderson Cooper knew she was doing it before she did it. I 100% guarantee it. I'm sorry, but I won't get sued. 99% sure. Okay. Um, but when she started saying, I will take your corporate money, what she was saying is, I would rather do, you know, I want to do the corporate thing. You could be in poor in America and say whatever you want. It's when you're pulling the... What she is basically saying is, I want to do whatever I want and have no repercussions. You see what I'm saying? And so there's, she's there's, like... There's that word. So when she's still whining... Repercussions. Yeah. yeah is there going to be repercussions <laughs> for voting for this union? But Kathy Griffin was saying, I want to make money hand over fist and still be edgy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, all these corporations are like, we're dropping sponsorship. She was losing her um, her uh, speaking fees. She got dropped from some of her comedy stuff. That's fine. You, you can do it. You just, you know, you have the freedom to do that. The problem that I had is it's a bigger thing. CNN tries to portray themselves as the middle, okay? They're not the middle. They're the far left. And I don't mean far, far left. You know, there's farther things to the left, okay? But there is no middle. Fox News is on the right, and CNN is on the left, okay? CNN tries to portray themselves as the middle, and they're not. And when they hire people like Kathy Griffin, Kathy Griffin is Kathy Griffin. They might have been surprised that she was holding the head in her hand, but they couldn't have been shocked. They knew what Kathy Griffin was. We want to be in the Kathy Griffin business who's edgy, but not too edgy. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so when she says that Donald Trump ruined her life, basically she is saying that all these corporate entities won't pay her anymore. Well, it didn't ruin her life. You could still go out and be like Guar and still hold that. You could be like Guar and do your Kathy Griffin thing and then pull out the, the severed head. You know, you're upset that you're losing your best friend Anderson Cooper, and I am hanging out with celebrities, okay? There's lots of comedians who never made any money. Uh, there's one I, I'm thinking of, Mitch Hedberg. Barely made money. He was doing heroin, uh, you know, in motel rooms. He died an early death, basically a pauper, okay? Kathy Griffin can do that, okay? But she's like, no, 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 I want to hang out with celebrities. I... You know, she's famous for, you know, my life on the D-list because she wants to make fun of celebrities. She wants to hang out with celebrities. She has no interest in being the starving, and I'll use one that you know, George Carlin. When you were growing up, you knew who George, George Carlin was, and you bought the George Carlin album, right? Mm -hmm. How many movies do you remember seeing George Carlin in? Um, at least a couple, I know that. Well, there was a couple, but when you think of big comedians, you know they have to make certain compromises to get big paychecks. Yeah. And George Carlin basically said, I'm a comedian, and if I get a paycheck or two, that's great. Right? But he his goal in life was not to hang out with the cool kids like Kathy Griffin was. 
See that? What you just what you just said there about Kathy Griffin kind of makes me think of Howard Stern. Yeah. Well, uh, Howard Stern, ha Howard Stern, and Kathy Griffin both started in a place where they were George Carlin. You know, they're telling the truth. They're being edgy. We're the people. And then they got to a certain age, and they're like, "Oh no, no! What I really like is being beloved by everybody and getting ten million dollar paychecks." Mm -hmm. How much do you think she made for being uh, doing New Year, New Year, basically New Year's Rock and Eve on CNN? She's upset that she lost that money. Okay, she's not upset about the severed head. She's upset about the repercussions of the severed head. Mm -hmm. Again, she didn't come out and apologize to Trump. She still believes it. She is upset about losing her corporate money. Mm -hmm. And again, which goes back to, and we'll, we'll cut, throw all those people out, which goes back to our business plan. Me, Fred Hunt, and you, Ted Coley. We can say whatever we want, basically, because nobody listens, right? <laughs> but at some point, if we want to make money, we have to, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll pull the, pull the uh, curtain back a little bit. I told you that I contacted a, a, a business and they said that they wanted, they did not want to be in the Fred and Ted business because they wanted to control the content. Yeah. And, and the reason they want to do that is to protect their image. Right. And they didn't have a problem per se with the premise and they didn't even have a problem with the business plan. They wanted to control the content. Yeah. Now it wasn't going to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen. But it goes back to no matter what company me and you go to, there is a certain controlling of the content. Well, when Howard Stern, you know, they couldn't get rid of him because they were making money hand over fist. You know, well, they couldn't control it. You know the whole story of pig vomit and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We're going to break you. Oh, no, I'm a, I'm a horse. I'm a free horse, a free range horse. You can't break me. It, it's all about, in America, corporations. Everything's a corporation. And part of the reason I don't like corporations is because, oh, go ahead. Well, and the bottom line for corporations is they have to protect their image. Right. Or their brand. Right. Because of money. Right. And so when LeBron James comes out and he says... Uh, no matter who you are, right. if you threaten that, you're gone. Right. And LeBron James isn't LeBron James sitting next to you and me. You know, he's number three and said Joe Coffin. He said Joe Coffin, special guest LeBron James. Right? LeBron James is LeBron James Incorporated. He is his own corporation. And that's why I feel bad because... Uh, I, knew, I knew somebody who used to... Um, uh, I'll whisper. Okay, she used to work at the daycare who took care of his sons, and she said LeBron James is a nice guy. Yeah, a nice guy. Well, of course he's gonna be nice to you because you're a good-looking, you know, white girl, and you know you take care of his kids. But she couldn't say enough. Night when when it's person to person, I've heard he's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. But when you're the head of LeBron James Inc. or Mark Zuckerberg Inc. or Howard Stern Inc. All these people have turned into corporations. And it's like, you're not what you were. And it's not that LeBron James isn't a basketball player, but now he's got a way, way in, uh, you know, portraying himself in a certain light. Yeah. I'm sorry, because I feel like I'm picking on LeBron. And like I said, it's not that he's a bad guy. He's a great basketball player. But again... It, it, it just, the, when he portrays it, like, he his main goal is to fight the fight. Mm -hmm. Well, no, your main goal is to put that ball through that hoop, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to give you $1 billion to take that ball and put it through that hoop, okay? He did not make a billion dollars by... And this happened in his at his home in Los Angeles, right? Yes, and Jason Whitlock, he's a reporter for Fox Sports... He came out and he said similar to what I'm saying. He's like, listen, LeBron James is a great guy. Same thing as me. And he says, but he is not in the trenches. Jason Whitlock is a black man. And he said, he's not in the trenches of the struggle like us. He said, he, his home was vandalized, but not even his house. His 
L.A. house, the one that he visits once in a while. So he read about his house from his caretaker. He goes, how many people have second houses in California? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right there you went from common man to the top one half of 1%. And they said, that's not only his second house. You know what I mean? And they said, oh, well, you know, that can even go back to rivalries. Do you remember back in high school... Did you ever hear stories? Oh, that's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. Did you ever hear of people shaking the bus or throwing rocks at the bus back in high school? I remember um, Brunswick. I went to Brunswick High School. I remember hearing stories of people throwing rocks at the bus after football games. Yeah. Well, all all the thing is at LeBron's house is basically I'm throwing a rock at the bus in high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? What can I say to you to hurt you yeah. the most? But... Not actually physically hurt. You know, you know what I'm saying? All it is is a giant sports rivalry. Yeah, Instead yep. of high school football, it's the NBA playoffs. Somebody I mean, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I'm right, but that's the first thing that popped into my head. And that head. popped into my head second. It was the second thing that popped in. So when Jason Whitlock is talking about uh, LeBron James is not down with the struggle, you know, poor LeBron, his second house in California was vandalized. I, I kind of saw what he was saying. But then what happened is Jason Whitlock got crucified on social media saying, you don't know LeBron, you know, the race relations in America are horrible, LeBron is right. And Jason Whitlock, it's like they didn't read what he had said. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what he was saying was basically, listen, he, it, there's lots of racism, but what you saw down the street in L.A. was not, you know, racism. It could have been as simple as basketball rivalry, yeah. football rivalry. You know, you're a jerk. You're, and I remember, and I'm not proud of this. I'll tell you a fast story, and then we'll tie it up because it's an hour and a half. Okay? I went to Brunswick High School. I played on the high school soccer team. Okay? And I was horrible. Okay? I barely made the team. There were 16 um, people on the team. If you had a depth chart from, or I'm sorry. Yeah, 16 people on the team, and there were 18 total because we would bring people up from JV. And if you ranked them from 1 to 18, right, um, I would have been 17th on the team. And the girl who played on the varsity team would have been about 15. <laughs> okay? So I barely got any playing time. And the girl was really good. She ended up playing for Bon Wallace. Okay? But she was better. Okay? Her name was Tanya. She was a good player. The point of my story was is that we played Lakewood High School in the 80s. Okay? And I'm sitting on the bench, and uh, one of the best players on the team and his little brother are using the F word to describe the homosexuals at Lakewood and swearing into the stand, you're all a bunch of Fs, okay? You know oh, wait a minute, this was a player on your team? Oh yeah, a player on our team. So a player on Brunswick High School. You're all a bunch of fags, okay? That's what he said. He screamed it in, and then they said, oh, go back to Brunswick. And then his brother is like, you bangits. You know, <laughs> you go back to, to reaming each other in the rear or whatever he said, right? This was in the 80s, okay? Now, did I, was I, did, was I culpable because I was sitting on the bench going, oh my God, they're going <laughs> to fight in the stands, right? And the guy who said it, was he a real homophobe or was he a dumb knucklehead high school kid who's just, like, in the heat yeah. of the soccer game, screaming out whatever's going to hurt the people who yeah. live in Lakewood. You see what I'm saying? I'm sorry to tell a story from my youth. We'll probably, we'll probably get kicked out of the air from my, my Brunswick High School story. <laughs> now, I can tell you the names of the people who did it, because I still remember it, okay? Their dad was the coach. Okay? <laughs> so I know, I know. So, But the point is... Is that you don't know what it was. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, again, you're taking something... That well, people, may... I, I think people get, like, irrational when it comes to sports and right. politics. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. There's a passion. My team wins. Your team wins. My guy wins. My guy lost. You suck. Uh, go die. So... So you, re I'm sorry, Ted. I don't mean to pick on you, but it is hot. I am starting to sweat. So I, it, our time is up. I am sweating. Um, song of the day. Song of the day. Um, Oklahoma City alarm clock by the fixtures. I keep talking about them. Ted, do you want to say anything? No. Okay.